Hi guys. All right. So I have a new stamp from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. This is called Mare and Full. It's so stinking adorable, right? Okay, so anyway, I already colored one image. I didn't record this, but I just wanted to get a feel for the stamp. And I just used my alcohol markers to color this in. But then I was thinking, okay, what else can I use to really make this pop? So as I was going through my stamps, I found this one, which um, is called The Path to the Barn. And this stamp last year I had so much fun with because I did a spring scene and I turned this into a little stream. I did a fall scene. Um, I did like a wintry scene. But I was thinking, what if I stamp these horses in front of the barn? So let's see if we can get that to work out. I have a piece of Nina Solar White here cut down to five and a quarter by four. I'm going to do this kind of um, um, standing up because... If I do it horizontally, I won't be able to get that barn in the background. So we might have to cut off a little of the back end of the horses, but I think it'll work out okay. So we're going to get our mini Misty out. And I think I'm going to be using color pencils to color it in. That's just my easiest, fastest media of choice to color. So I'm gonna put this down. And I, I like to put my paper just slightly away from the edges when it's a larger stamp like this so I can move the stamp around. So let's do it this way. If we put the stamp down first, then we can figure out where the paper needs to go. So then the paper needs to go all the way over here on this end. And I want to make sure that this is pressed down into the corner because um, we don't, if we have to restamp it, we want to make sure that our, our back sheet and I have a little piece of ranger sticky grid back there is pressed down into the bottom right corner okay so more. just moving it over slightly all right the sticky grid makes it pretty easy and I'm going to call, uh, stamp it with some Brutus Moreau Detail Ink. You can use Archival Ink. I like the VersaFine Claire, but sometimes when I'm using color pencils, it smears a little bit. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting good coverage with this ink and that it's not going to smear. Okay, so we have to stamp the horses first, and then we are going to mask them. And then we'll stamp our little barn. That's actually pretty good. I don't need to do much with that. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna call that a win. Clean my stamp off here. And again, I love their packaging. I cannot say it enough because all I do now is clean the stamp off and put it right back on its backer sheet and then put it in the little bucket. Okay, so now I need to do a little mask. And I really just kind of need to mask off the top of the horses there. So where is my masking paper? Did I put it away? I'm getting really good at putting stuff away and losing things. I've lost so many things this week, it's not even funny. And I never lose anything. I lost my debit card. Um, what else did we lose? I don't know. Just all kinds of stupid things that I've never lost before. Now, just too much going on. Where's my masking sheets? I normally have them right in front of me. Okay, we're just going to use Post-it Note for the, for the time being. No. And actually, you know what? I can probably cheat. Let's just do this. Let's be a little lazy, Nance. Sometimes I do that. You guys have watched my channel know. All right, that's gonna work just fine. Ta-da! <laughs> Instant mask. Because I really just want 
the top part here, the barn. I mean, I guess I could. Let's do this. tiny little piece of fence that's with the barn and I think that will look cute on the front of the card here so we are going to mask it off a little bit here really simple to do like I said if you have masking paper it's nice because the masking paper does hold up during a couple of inkings or stampings, but if you don't, post-it tape will work too. Just make sure it's the full sticky back post-it. So this, all of this will, is, is sticky. Okay, so now we have our mask. Okay, so then what I'm using is basically this part of the fence and this part of the um, barn is what I want to show. So I'm going to carefully kind of position this so that shows up in the background. Let me move my magnet. Okay. Now, if you're not sure how it's going to show up and you don't like to wing things, which we all know is not the case for Nancy. I like to wing it all the time. You can always grab a piece of acetate. So this is just acetate. That's just extra acetate that's been in my drawer. You know, we get it off of packaging and things like that. And then just lightly ink your stamp. Just kind of hold that acetate in place. Maybe put a magnet on there. Okay, my paper's all covered. And then you can kind of pre-stamp it and you'll see exactly where your image is going to go. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that alone. I like that a lot. So just take that off and then make sure you wipe that off later. Now I'm going to ink up my whole image. I'm going to wipe this, this part because I don't care about that. I just want the fence. Okay. And I use the Misty because sometimes when we do masking, it doesn't um, give us a clear impression. And of course, you know, with larger stamps, you might need to do that a couple of times. So I like to use my mini Misty or whatever stamp positioning tool. So you can see right here, right on the edge of the mask, I didn't get a good impression. So I just have to stamp it again. And this time I'm gonna put a little more pressure on those areas. Much better. I would say that's pretty good.
have our horse and the barn in the background. And nobody's going to be any wiser. And I keep my masking with my stamps. I'm just going to set the heat tool to this. Bringing in my Arteza color pencils and their beautiful case. I have my little blending stumps and my Gamsel here. And now is the fun part, the easy part. We just color it all in. I just love how that came out. That looks really, really cool. Okay. So let's just start coloring in. I think I want to make the full a light brown and Mama a darker brown. So this is called burnt ochre. Oh yeah, that's making him like a reddish brown. That's actually pretty good. And I like to go through when I'm doing color pencils. Listen, guys, I am not super neat with this at all. Because I know the Gamsel will blend it out. And I'll link everything down below for you guys. Um, the color pencils are really inexpensive. They blend super smoothly. I like that there's a wide variety of colors. And you don't have to be super neat with your coloring. If, you, if you're somebody who's kind of on a time restraint, um, this is why I like color pencils. Because I can throw together a card really quickly. And it's really easy to blend versus using um, markers because with the markers, I find you have to use a little bit better paper and it takes a little more effort to blend them. And I'm not really that good at it yet. This darker color is called cinnamon. So I just went in and did his um, mane with that. And anywhere that the artist has drawn kind of shadows on him or where I know it's going to be darker, I'm going to go in with that cinnamon and fill that in. Again, not too worried about how my pencil strokes look because a lot of those are going to be eliminated when we use the Gamsel. Now, I got a little bit out of the lines there. No big deal. You can erase her and erase that. But we're going to color Mama in a darker color, so that'll cover it up. So I'm going to leave those colors out, and then we're going to go in and do Mama. I think she should be a nice chocolate brown. Okay, so this is called Cocoa Brown. Same thing. Super fast with coloring this in. And let me zoom with you guys in so you can see a little better. There we go. Other card I made, I colored them both uh, two different colors of gray. You know, I think a lot of times we feel like when we're making cards, we have to be super precise and everything has to be you know, really perfect. And this is where it's fun to make cards. Because you're just being artistic. You don't have to be super fun and precise. This one's called Burnt Umber. It's a little bit darker brown. I'm being a little more heavy-handed with this brown. Again, anywhere that the artist has drawn in the shadows, I'm taking the darker color and filling that in. So I always, I don't know why, go to the traditional brick red barn. 
So this one's called Garnet Red. And again, you don't need to add a lot of color. You just go in and play with it. For the sky, we're just gonna color in some sky blue. Not real neat here, because again, the gamsel's gonna blend that out. I just wanna have that color down. want rolling hills of green I'm assuming so some spearmint green up oh, that's like a bluish green we want to we want a brighter green than that matcha green oh there we go oops something's under my table there Carry that green all the way down. Add a little bit of darker green. This is called moss green. Just randomly throwing this in in different spots. Koala gray, a little bit of a broken pencil tip there. And we need to add a little bit of colors to our trees. Espresso brown. And I'm going to use that same espresso brown and fill in our fence. And some camel brown to do kind of the, uh, the path of greenery here. And so now our coloring is all done. It looks like a hot mess, but wait till you see how the gamsel brings it all together. So we put the gamsel in this little dauber top and I'll link everything down below for you. And then you just take these pencil stumps and what the gamsel does is, is it um, melts the wax in the color pencil and just causes this smooth, smooth blend into the paper. So there's no pencil lines. Everything blends effortlessly. For me, it's a lot easier than doing markers. Personal preference, I think this is great for all um, types of stamping or coloring. And it's quick. It really gives it a finished look. And 
and you'll know when it's drying out because it, you'll feel it, um, the difference between the textures on the paper. But look at the difference between our little horse and mama horse now. See how smooth he is? So now we're gonna do mama. And it doesn't matter if you go dark to light, light to dark, it all blends effortlessly. And you can always go back in and add more color. If you need to erase color, just go in with a pencil and erase it. It's a little harder to erase once the gamzel's in there, so you wanna do any erasing before you go in with your gamzel. But I've said it time and time again, when I use these stamps from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps, first of all, you're getting high quality red rubber stamps. That's hard to find um, a lot of places that manufacture stamps have moved to clear stamps, which is fine. You guys know I love photopolymer clear stamps, but when you have a large image like this, I mean, it's basically a full card front. I don't mind the red rubber stamps because I'm really not lining up too much or, you know, stacking or layering them. Um, so I don't mind them. I like that they don't come on a block that I can use my stamp positioning tool again in case you need to re-stamp it. Because it's a large image, sometimes we don't ink properly or we just don't get that full coverage when we stamp it down. So I like that they come clean mounted already. I love the little backer sheets. They're already laminated. They're already pre-colored. So you, if you don't have an idea what to do, you can just look at those little um, sheets and they'll give you an idea of how it's colored. Um, our design team is a mixture of a lot of different um, backgrounds. We have artists, we have card makers, we have um, beginners, we have people that have been doing it for years. Um, so different styles as well. I tend to be a quickie card maker. Um, I like to do things and have them done in, in relatively short a period of time. So my videos are generally pretty quick except for me talking through them. Um, but if you go to the stamp shows and the conventions, there's the stamp scrap art tour, and there's also the heirloom rubber stamp show. Um, stop in and see Lynn from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. She's the owner. She's there. And tell her, hey, I found you through Nancy Stamps. She loves hearing that. And then any ideas that you, um, you know, picked up along the way, like with pan pastels and stuff like that, she does make and takes there that you can try it out and see if it's something you like or maybe it's not your style. But spring's coming up. I will have the show here in my local neighborhood, which is going to be in Allentown at the end of March. So, um... You know, I usually will wear my Nancy Stamps t-shirt. I'll probably be helping Lynn out a little bit. So if you see me, don't hesitate to, to come on over to me and say, Hey, Nance, because I love that. I'm a normal person just like you guys. And, um, yeah, I mean, anything we can do to support each other in this crafting community. You know, unfortunately, big box stores don't carry all the newest and latest and greatest stuff and you can't find these kinds of stamps at big box stores so go to these little stamp shows i tell you it's worth the six dollars for the entry fee to to meet all of these little crafter shops mom and pops that have some beautiful stamps and uh very very reasonable prices as well i stock up on all of my supplies when i go to these shows you can see how quickly this is coming together. Whoops, just by putting that gamzel on everything. But she, Lynn picks beautiful stamps, and, um, you know, she presses these in Maryland, so they're made in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it being a stolen design from China, like off of some of those websites that are out there, AliExpress and things like that. Um... Pan pastels are actually made right down the road from me in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. So that's also a local product. And they have joined with Lynn to um, kind of create her own 
palette, the day and night palette and the sunrise sunset palette. And they're definitely worth the investment because they will last you forever. And you're getting all of the basic colors if you combine those two palettes. She also sells a couple um, loose colors at the show that you can pick up. You can also get all of these things on the website. BlueNightRubberStamps.com We are almost done here. And again, this panel's a little large. It's cut to five and a quarter by four. I will probably go in and cut it down a little more and then add a little matte um, frame around the back and then put it on my card front. A lot of my cards you will see on display at um, in Lynn's booth along with the other design team members. Um, and you can say, hey, I saw Nance make a video on that. Because when I make them um, for my design team, I send them to Lynn and then she hangs them up in her booth. Now, you can certainly improve on this design very easily by going back in and layering up your colors. You can add more colors. You can add more depth with the shadowing. Personal preference. If you're a quickie crafter like me, you might leave it alone. If you want to add more, you go ahead and add more. It's, it's up to you. If I see any blank spots, I just kind of rub over them and transfer that color over from the color next to it. But doesn't that look pretty? Oh, I'm really impressed with this one. Lynn, I might have to keep this one. You might not get this one for your booth. Okay. Now, when you get a tip like this that's getting a little jaggedy, they sell this, basically it's sandpaper, and you just kind of rub that along the sandpaper and it will take that um, fuzz off the end of your blending tool. And this is odorless mineral spirit, so it doesn't smell. You don't have any weird scents or anything like that. But it makes it really easy to blend these colors out. Oh, I need to be careful around my trees there. Now here I didn't add enough color, so what I'll do is I'll blend this first layer and then I'll go in and add some color. And I just have to be really careful because I did color in my trees here and I don't want that brown spreading into my sky. It looked like a thundercloud or something. Rain shower. So let me go back in with some lighter blue. So, like, for Mama, I think I want to darken her up a little bit. Where's that espresso red? Let me see here. Dark chocolate brown. I'm okay with the way he looks. I'm going to leave him alone. And I just want to add some more blue to the sky.
The other thing I like to do is, let me grab my eraser. to take some of that color out just like we do with pan pastels and I've already gone over this once with Gamsel so some of that is kind of stuck in there but you know just to give it a little bit of difference where some have some light spots some have dark spots should have done that before I went in with the gamsel, but you get the idea. And this is dry, it doesn't feel wet or anything. It, it just, um, the Gamsel go in, goes in, like I said, it melts the wax and then it evaporates so it dries instantly. So you don't have moisture in your paper, you don't have anything wet. So you, as soon as you're done with this, you can go right to mounting it on the card. Um, you don't have to worry about letting it set to dry anywhere tree has gone a little crazy over here. Of course, this uh, stamp set has some little tree toppers. So if you want to go through and add some greenery, you can. We'll just pretend like this is the beginning of spring and we don't have anything to put in our trees yet. This little patch of green here is going to bother me, so let's fix that. You guys get the idea and like I said you can go in and add more colors take some away if you need to lighten it um, but you can always go back in and darken it and shade it some more blend it a little more I mean I did a pretty quick pretty quick one here and then I like to go in with my jelly roll pen 
and add a little bit of dimension there. Give something of the nostrils right there a little bit. And then over here. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. But pretty easy to do, pretty easy to color. And again, this stamp set is called the Mare and Fold. And then we paired that with the Path to the Barn. Okay. And again, both of these are from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. I'll link them for you below. I'll also link the Arteza Color Pencils, the Gamzol, and the Blending Stumps for you guys. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, I appreciate your thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, click the video and then click the bell to get notifications on when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.